to uh, Gillick Games. Delighted to be joined by the uh, now manager of Tyrone's Eden Dork, former joint manager of Kilku, Conleth Gilligan. Morning, Conleth. How are things? Morning, Shane. Morning, Ashley. Things are good. You're uh, you're being kept busy, uh, straight from one job into the other. Uh, how, how did this all come about, Eden Dork? So um, heading into the uh, the fiery depths of the Tyrone Championship <coughs> <by> next year. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose like Aidan Dark would be, we would, Ballinary would straddle the Tyrone border, so Aidan Dark would be very close locally. Um, so it would have been probably a team and, and, and players I would have, have been watching because we would follow the Tyrone Championship closely based on our, our geography as well and, and the fact that, you know, there's so many games are so exciting. Uh, a number of the Tyrone uh, panellists on the team, including uh, Niall Morgan, who uh, famously plays a lot of the time outfield for, for Eaton Dork so it, I'm seeing some similarities here Conleth with your own career where you started in goals for Ballanderry and I moved to outfield so you're almost the reverse of, of Niall Morgan's <laughs> career Yeah and, and Bobo, Bobo tried his best Bobo Keane tried his best to get outfield we he wouldn't did. let him so <laughs> so um, probably there's there's some sort of symmetry there but yeah look uh, Niall would have, would, have, would have played outfield uh, all the time for, for Eaton Dork and, and I suppose when you went to watch Tyrone Club Championship matches you know is a fine footballer in his own right as opposed to just a goalkeeper as well It's a fiery championship as well of a Tyrone Gashing you reminded me this morning about how yeah. competitive it is I was just looking back over it I always known it was notoriously competitive but I was just looking over the stats and I'm pretty sure it was from 2005 that it's been a different winner each year that it is that competitive am I right in saying that Conlon? Yeah, absolutely. Look, and I suppose um, there's been no team. Maybe you have to go back to maybe um, Carrick Moore, Ergil Cairn from the last team to retain it back to back. And it is it's that length of time. And there's just nothing between any of the teams. And and it's so competitive. And and I suppose whenever Tyrone's going really well, some of the teams would struggle more so because they wouldn't have their county players. And you know, and I suppose Aidan Dark would have, would have struggled a bit with that there. So um, look, I suppose I'm looking forward. It's it's a strange because obviously a large part of the last four years of my life had been in Kilku and it, it is very, very strange to to think that, you know, you'll not be there. And even over the last three or four years where we had been getting to the latter stages of the All-Ireland, every Christmas and every Boxing Day was spent in Kilku. And it was it was just strange this year where you, you didn't have that. And, you know, it will take a, a lot of adjusting, a lot of getting used to, but uh, to be fair, um, I got a lot of nice messages from, from the people of Kilku and, you know, I suppose it's a, it's a place and, and people that will all be very close to my heart and no matter what I would do ever in the future. Yeah, talk to us a little bit about that. I haven't spoke to you since you've departed. Um, I didn't get a chance to speak to you after the, the Ulster final <clears throat> either. So I suppose talk to us about that decision to step away and yeah, how you're feeling about it all because you did spend a lot of time there, had some great memories. So I'm sure it's not a, an easy decision. No, look, it wasn't. Uh, I suppose it was four years, and, and and Richie Thornton had been there too. So, um, obviously Mickey stepping away, like we wanted to stay on just to to make sure that things were stabilised, and we thought there was definitely a team there that would be good enough to to challenge for for down and and maybe Ulster and beyond. And I suppose it was a case that after four years you didn't get over the line in Ulster, and and you're close, and you've seen how. The Glen are, are in a really good shout now. So um, it was more a case just that after four years, we just felt that the players needed something new and needed something fresh. And um, look, we would love to have stayed for another year, but we felt that it probably wasn't right for the, the wider group and that some fresh thinking and a fresh voice might be the difference in, in pushing them on again because there's really good young players, you know, and the older players look after themselves exceptionally well. And I wouldn't expect any retirement. So there's no reason why that team can't push on again and, and win down and maybe give Ulster uh, and beyond another rattle because the players are there, the attitude's there, you know, the infrastructure in the club is geared up for it. So there's absolutely no reason why they won't be at the latter stages again. Yeah, massive talent within that Kilku squad and no doubt next year they'll be there, thereabouts again. What was it like, I suppose, after the Ulster final in the dressing room after that loss to Glenn? Yeah, look, it was very difficult, I suppose. Really, you'd have had to went back to the Cora Finn final four years ago from from that type of defeat um, because obviously the year afterwards was the COVID year um, which there was no Ulster so then the next year was, was Ulster and All-Earn so it was a group of players who weren't accustomed to losing big games and I suppose you get into that with Kilku and you always feel that you're going to win the match and, and that's regardless whether you're playing well or not because they just had that innate ability to dig it out and grind it out and find a way even whenever things were going against them so um we knew the challenge it was going to be against Glenn, you know, very formidable side. Um, probably 
the couple of bounces of the ball that went for us the previous year didn't go and, um, and Glenn won the game and, and good luck to them and you've seen just how able they were pushing on again Mike Collin and beat them even though they were kind of below the, the way they played in the Ulster final they still had enough and found a way It's funny like uh, I, I remember uh, the great interview Ashley did with Conor Glass after the, the Ulster Club final and he was he was hinting at a, a little bit of needle between the Glen and Kilku players on the pitch and look Ulster club football is is spicy and feisty at the best of times but um, and look sledging is something that's that's part of the game now it was clearly a rivalry that um, that was very very feisty on the day which is which is great to see as as a fan I suppose yeah the intensity of the game that day and you could feel it from the stand and I suppose Ashton was there you know every ball was so continually keenly contested you know every point every score every block. You know, and you could just feel the tension, and and sometimes that spills onto the pitch. And obviously, losing the game last year for them after extra time, you know, they had huge motivation. You know, Kilku getting back to maybe trying to retain their All Ireland club title. There was so much on the line, and it wasn't just that one day. Like that's the culmination of work on both sides of years and years. And you sort of had a feeling that day, if you could get over the line, you're in with a serious chance of winning the All Ireland club, and and that's what was at stake and you know things boil over and you know but like after the game like you see, you know you, you seen pictures of of Connor Lavery and Michael Warnock um with kids at the very end so look there'd be there'd be a lot of you know respect between the teams and I think that's a rivalry that that may endure into the future and that may not just be the last time they would uh, brush shoulders and that photo of, of Connor Laverty, I think it was yeah. a sports fan maybe it was it was an unbelievable Brandon picture. Monaghan Brandon Monaghan yeah mm-hmm. unbelievable photograph just to see in that moment he still had the the dignity to, I guess, give a little moment or two to, to a fan. Um, That's actually interesting to bring up. Like, obviously, Conor Laverty is is managing down. So, yeah. Conor, you are managing Conor while he's managing down. So, a county team. So, how was that dynamic? Yeah, look, Conor was very, very upfront uh, right from the start that he was keen on doing it. And, and we give him our full support. And, like, we'd offer, you know, especially at the start when they just got going, we'd offer him nights off and, and maybe take breaks and, and he wouldn't do it. And, like, he'd schedule everything around trying to make everything work. And we would have trained Monday, Wednesday, Fridays generally all the time because of the way the down league's structured. And we continued that and, and Connor continued to train down then um, in between time. So, look, I think anybody that was looking in from the outside would have known the type of character Connor is and the bounce they would have got. And like it's no surprise to me that that down have started the year with two wins. Um and again, the next round they've, they've got the semi final in the Mechana Cup against Derry, which will be a massive chance because Derry have been playing stronger teams maybe than than some of the other counties. So this will be a massive test for Down just to see exactly where they are because it's a very competitive division three. But the one thing that Connor will bring is serious enthusiasm, serious passion, you know and not to mention you know, his knowledge of the game and, and his ability to rate to young players. And he's had these guys at under-21s or under-20s and they've won an Ulster. So there's a there's an element of belief and I think, look, it's a, it's a great time for Down. I think they will improve where they've been in previous years. Um, probably has been unfortunate and maybe sort of some of the managers have been lucky at times because it, they've been in Division 2 that was really hard to get out of. And I think Down will be on the bounce. They've done a goal in the Championship and... You know, I wouldn't bet against them to, to get a win there. Um, kind of the last, I think it was last April, myself and yourself shared a stage on uh, in uh, in Monaghan Town for a bit of a championship preview night. I remember uh, I was asking for predictions towards the end and you, you were predicting Derry to win the Ulster Championship. A few raised eyebrows in the, amongst the Monaghan crowd and you know what, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Maliki O'Rourke was on the stage with us at, at the same time. Um, and look, you know how difficult it is to win a, a Derry cl- Senior Club Championship I mean, just how impressive has Maliki been? I, I've made it no secret on this show how much of a fan I am, given a, a Mon- I'm a Monaghan man, a bit of love there for Maliki O'Rourke, but what he's done with Glenn um, is is more than impressive. Yeah, it is. Look, and I suppose Maliki would have been there with Ryan Porter uh, back from the Monaghan days. And look, he took Monaghan, he, he put them at the top table where they were that consistently, and they're still there. And I suppose it'd be fingerprints of what he has done still on that team with them players, you know, but... You know, even add into that the likes of, you know, Johnny Bradley, who would be at the very top end of sports analysis and, you know, along with Mickey McCullough, who I'd have been at school with. So, like, they've got a county management setup. They have a county management um, team there. Like, this Glen team obviously got that county final three years ago and lost to Marafelt, you know, in a very close game. Um, obviously, Connor Glass coming home was the catalyst along with Malik O'Rourke because it just changed the whole dynamic. But, like, you know, the likes of Ryan Dugan, Cahill Mulholland, Michael Warnock, Danny Town, like they were all very, very good players in Derry. But there was a feeling that they could miss the boat and they might not push through. 
Malik O'Rourke, I think, changed that because they got somebody who they felt knew how to win big games, knew how to win competitions. He'd already won an Ulster club with a loop. Um, so he'd been there and he'd done it. They had put their full faith in him. He had put their full faith in them. And look, it, it has been a massive appointment. And I think probably Glenn will just do whatever it takes to keep Maliki there for as long as he can because there's no doubt that you know the correlation between Maliki work being places and teams being successful you know is is there to, for everybody to see there's no doubt another manager you'll have learned a lot from over the last um, couple of years and few years is is Mickey Moran um a bit of a guru when it comes to to GA management I think it's fair to say and uh, like I, I even remember speaking to you before about that that moment when Kilku were two points down in, in injury time in the All Ireland Club final and I think you were saying you were standing between um, Mickey and, and Jerome Johnston and you, you had a bit of a premonition that you know that goal was going to come. But l- you must have learned so much standing on sidelines beside that man. Ah, you do. And, and I suppose it's, it's very hard to put into words what you learn. It's, it's really whenever you're talking to people and you're in situations and you go, well, you know, what would Mickey do here? And I think, I suppose, what he brings, and, and not unlike Malik Rourke and, and all the great managers, is that calmness and they don't panic. You know, they, they, they look at the situation and they read it well and... I think Mickey has something very special in as far as his personality. Like, and no matter where who meets him or where they meet him, you know, he just has that way of making you feel very, very special. And you know, players love him. And, and you go back and you, you listen to things of some of the ex Donegal players, ex BO players say about him. You know, and he hasn't been there for fifteen years or twenty years. So um, it just shows how special the character is. But look, excuse me. <coughs> you know, I'd be in, I'd be talking to Mickey sort of two or three times, maybe every week. Uh, you know. Mm-hmm. From he le- even when he was there and from he left and and went to, went to, we went down to the the Glen game on uh, Sunday together as well. So look, their their friendships with me and him and Richie and the boys and you know and all the Gilku people that will endure. And I suppose when you get through a length of time, you spend that much time. You had four years on the the road and and three with Mackay. You just have a relationship and a bond. And and when you win, it just makes it that more bit more special. When I spoke to Caelan Doherty after he had won the All Ireland, he said that he had only ever saw Mickey raise his voice once, <laughs> and he said, I think he said it was the extra time in the All Ireland final, and he was saying, you know, you have thirty minutes here for all the work you've put in for the whole year, you know, to to turn this around, something along the lines of this. But he said that that was the only time that he'd actually actually seen him raise his voice. <laughs> Yeah, look, it, it was actually half time whenever we were maybe six points down and things weren't going well. And I suppose the way the dynamic had always worked, I would have started and, and, and Richie would have been and then Mickey would have finished. And I don't think I even got started and Mickey just <laughs> threw something and started, you know, and, and obviously the fact that he never would raise his voice or never would be cross meant everybody sat up and listened. And it was a case at that stage that, look, you have 30 minutes to go on and see if you can get yourself back into this game. And if you can't, you're back down the road again with another defeat and, you know, losing an All Ireland Club final is devastating. But I suppose to get back there after the COVID year and a couple of years and, and not to give up your best and, and like we hadn't been our best in that first half and, and I suppose once we threw caution at the wind and, and went at it, uh, you know, look, special things happen. But no, look, um Mickey would have lost his temper with me once once or twice more. But uh no he, he reserved it for us and, and the players always get off a wee bit later. <laughs> scary. It's like your it's like the parent who's like the, the quiet parent or the less scary parent when they raise the voice then you're like, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. It was the it was the semi final the year before we were playing Bally Bowden. Um the first year that we got to the final and there was five or six minutes to go and this was wherever the sort of mere foreign you could go onto the pitch and, and get messages out and I had an altercation with a lines man and I get sent to the stand and obviously you get sent to the stand you lost your you know and, and Mickey was he loved getting somebody out and getting messages on and I wasn't there and he just gave me a stare and after it into the oh, changing no. room and you know and I said sorry for letting him down and I was waiting on it and you know he, he never said anything he just gave me a hug and he says look that's a lesson learned and, and I, I, I really thought I was for it that day and, and maybe if we hadn't won that match it could have been yeah. a very different story I mightn't have been back with him for a for a second or a third year yeah Jesus <laughs> scary moments it's a, the stare alone speaks a thousand words no doubt ah look when, when Mickey gives you that death stare he doesn't have to say anything you you know you're in trouble yeah 100%. only some people have that isn't it it's, oh, yeah it's an aura yeah like, it is it's a presence does it give you ambitions kind of your experiences and obviously heading into the, the Eden Dork job as well uh, for, for inter-county management I know there's a lot more I don't know pressure is the word because there's pressure on club management as well for sure but maybe more of a, a media focus on the on the inter-county job is, is that something that you harbour ambitions of in, in the coming years? Ah oh, yeah look that would be something I'd, I'd love to I'd love to do um, 
obviously when you come from like a setup with Kilku had, like it, it would be very similar to, you know, been involved in a county setup mm. because of the, the sort of stage of the year you're at and things. So no, look, it, it's something I'd, I'd love to try at some point, uh, you know, as well as maybe in the next year or two, sort of managing my own club, Ballandary. Um, obviously, uh, I've been involved with the sort of a wee group there from probably under sixes, and this year we're beating the, the minor semi final. So I have a lad that's moved across into senior. So maybe after a couple of years of him being there on his own without me annoying him because I'd have been sort of helping and coaching his team all the time and you know and that's not easy and I suppose this year Killian Collins the boundary manager and I think it's probably a chance for Adam to get away away from me where I'm not probably been too sore on him or or he's not been too sore on me and and obviously all the the rows that happen at training or at matches are always brought into the home and for anybody that sort of manages their son at, at any top level you know I have great admiration for him because it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Oh, it's the car journeys. Yeah. That's the worst one. Oh, going the silence from probably. the games. Yeah. 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 Silence is worse. Yeah. Uh, it's more so whenever uh, his mummy was at the match and, you know, takes his side and they all gang up on me at home and I'm in, <laughs> I'm in trouble for it. Oh, yeah. You're the victim, uh, you're ha- the victim here, Connell. Yeah. 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 It's happened, it's happened once or twice. And I uh, look, to be fair, um, you're always sore on your own. And a lot of the times, you know, you would, you would say things or you'd take them off or you might take off somebody else. And, you know, it probably is something that's very hard to navigate. And, you know, as I say, out of great admiration for anybody who's been able to do it at, at the top level. Well, geez, that, that brings me nicely into the next question because um, there was a few headlines when uh, when Bally Bay, uh, the Monaghan County Champions, were were drawn to play Kilku in the in the Ulster Club Championship this year. And, of course, Jerome Johnston, a man you know very well, uh, in charge of Bally Bay. Uh, now he opted to to step aside. Of course, he has sons and nephews, and Jesus, loads loads of family members. Johnston's on that uh, on that Kilku team. Uh, now apparently he had made his his plans quite clear to Bally Bay from the outset of taking the job. That if we ever meet Kilku, I don't want to be involved. I can't manage against my my blood. Uh, it was it was a bit of an awkward one, Conleth, because you know some people are saying Jesus, he he has to. You're you're the manager of Bally Bay. You have to be involved. But then you look at the human element, and you're like, well. Must be so tough to to try and come up and plan against your own your own family. Yeah, look, that the situation it was in, you know, it had been a quite a while from Bally Bay had won a championship, let alone got a run in the Ulster Club. So I suppose at the outset he laid a stall out, but the likelihood of it happening was was very very unlikely. So I probably think in the back of his head he probably thought, well, it might never happen. You know, <laughs> even we do win a championship, you know, our pass beaten cross, one of the two teams might be beaten. But look. Whenever the draw for Ulster was made, I suppose he was probably looking back at it and thinking, well, we'd still have to beat the, the Armagh champions. Yeah. And but it was Cross McGlenn and so formidable. But look, you know, to be fair, Jerome from these boys were, you know, on a lot of the senior team now were, were very, very young. He was part of the under 14s and the minor teams that were very successful. So as well as having, you know, five nephews, well, six nephews and, and three sons on top of that, look, he's a huge Kilku supporter and. Like, I never ever thought there was a situation where that he was going to manage against Kilku and I suppose it took a few days probably for word to break out but you know and Mark Dorn he'd, he, you know it's he'd somebody there that was able to hold the reins and um, look it would have been the most difficult day would have been for him like I, I know he didn't go to the game um, and that would have been very difficult particularly after the game when you don't win you have to make contact with players and you don't really know how they're going to feel but like I know you know chatting to, to Paul Finlay and some of the boys that would know a wee bit better you know they would have nothing but great time for Jerome and, and they completely stood behind his decision and you know on the day like they were, they were brilliant in cross McGlennon I suppose that gave mm. us a, a really good feel for how good they could be and had they have scraped through that game or not played as well we might not have been as well prepared but um, we'd had to prepare really well for them and, and we did and and that sort of gave us the, the advantage because we'd seen them at their best. Is that something you, you've had to do even in, when you're involved with Kilku and now heading to Eden Dork? Have you had to <clears throat> make it clear that, you know, if you do ha- end up <laughs> coming up against Ballanderry in an Ulster Club Championship game that you want to step aside? Or have you ha- even had that or thought of having that conversation? <laughs> no, look, look I, I haven't actually met anybody, uh, the players or, or anybody at Eden Dork just yet. But uh, no, no, like, uh, I'll, definitely not, I'll definitely not be on the sideline and that happens. But um, <laughs> very, very interesting, like, I suppose, we would have a competition in Ulster's an Ulster League and it would be a very minor pre-season competition and in my first year in with, with Kilku and um, they played Ballandary in Ballandary in that competition and you know and I stood on the sideline and I never opened my mouth but it was a very difficult difficult thing to do um, you know and especially when you have family and you know and I suppose at that stage I had still played with all the players because i just finished and i just retired so um, you know it happened a, a number of years ago Ronan McGuckin when he managed Ergil Kieran or his, and they played Ballandary and he stepped away and, and I look Ergel won that day and, and it was the right decision for him and um, 
everybody has to make them them decisions on their own and what's right for somebody maybe isn't right for somebody else and mm. um that's just the nature of it you kind of go outside your county because you don't want that hassle and you know probably when you're successful that's the only opportunity that that the teams have a beaten so um but there will there'll be a lot of stars would have to align for for anything like that to happen <laughs> either way of course uh, listen uh, Conor, great with your time great with your time as always i'm just looking here so it's yourself and uh, this is Malachy's club man justin core taking charge of uh, of Eden dork now as we said Niall morgan darren mccurry con kilpatrick uh, they're coming up from the intermediate ranks as well in in tyrone so very best of luck with that one and uh, no doubt we'll uh, we'll catch up with you in the coming months as well you will. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Conlip. Christoph Conlip Gilligan there, of course. The uh, the new Eden Dork boss.